I'm Silvana Richardson and I'm the Head of Teacher Development at Bell and I also work for the Bell Foundation which is a charity that helps children with English as an additional language achieve in the education sector in the UK. And I'm Gabriel Diaz Maggioli and I come from Uruguay where I'm the Director of LUDUS. LUDUS is the Professional Development and uh, Pedagogical Innovation Centre at the Catholic University. So we're here to talk about our white paper, which we co-wrote for Cambridge University Press on effective professional development, principles and best practice, and which we presented this morning here at ISFO, uh, where we try to bridge uh, the gap between theory and practice in what happens in professional development of language teachers in particular. Professional development we define as a career-long process where uh, teachers in improve, hone their skills so as to better serve their students. And this happens from the moment you set foot in a language teaching institution as a teacher. And it's not just a matter of accumulating degrees, it's just this ongoing process of reflecting on your practice and seeing how you can serve your students best. The recommendations that we have included in the white paper are all based on evidence, on very solid and robust evidence of what constitutes effective professional development. And by effective professional development, we mean professional development that helps organisations and teachers get transferable, powerful learning that can be applied in the classroom. So um, the recommendations that we made are all about improving professional development programs to achieve that. So for example, if a, gr a group of teachers um, has sustained professional development over a long period of time that's supported, that's followed up, they're much more likely to learn whatever that's being taught or presented and in a way that allows them to apply what they have learned to their practice as teachers and therefore in, in turn and hopefully improve the students' uh, learning outcomes. So all the recommendations have got to do with ways uh, and designs and, and ways of designing professional development programs that ensure that that activity is really impactful so that teachers become better teachers so that the students become better learners. Honestly, I believe it's the career that we choose that prompts us to be on the constant lookout to improve our skills, our knowledge, our dispositions. So yeah, I have a lot to learn depending on where my career path takes me. I would answer in a very similar way. Um, I'm always very driven and I always want to learn and I'm never satisfied. I can't stay still and just be sure that what I know is what I need. So I'm constantly learning. And again, because my learning has got to do with my job, it's very situated and it depends very largely on what I'm doing next. So I can't tell you I want to develop this skill or that. It depends on where the job takes me. I think it was great uh, to collaborate with Gabo, yeah. Gabo, yeah. <laughs> because uh, we have we come from a similar background. Gabriel is from Uruguay, I'm from Argentina, and that means that we our own teacher education went through similar paths. So there's a I think there's a lot of common ground oh, yeah. and a lot of mutual understanding about and beliefs yeah. and what background everything so it's very easy to work with someone who shares your background your understanding but also what I really admire and like about working with Gabriel and Gabriel's background is the fact that um, he's got such an, a, an extensive experience um, as a teacher educator and a teacher of teacher educators and, um, and, and manager of, you know, leader of CPD in so many different contexts. Yeah. So that gives him a very uh, thorough, systematic knowledge and understanding of educational systems. But also, uh, he's, and that's the second point, he's one of the best informed uh, people I've ever met and that's oh, great. Thank you very much. It's, it's really great and, and his understanding of theory and the way he puts it in, in beautiful words. So there was a phrase I was just saying to him yesterday in the white paper that he talked about uh, theorizing practice and then practicing theory. It's just beautiful and it's true so yeah. And it's, there are no words to describe the pleasure it is to work with Silvana. First of all we met in Brighton mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a few years ago. 2011, and I attended her session and I was literally mind blown and said, where has this woman been all my life, <laughs> right? And from then I started reading things she'd written, attending every single thing that I could attend, and seeing how, as you put it, 
our backgrounds kind of coincide. There's some synergy in our thinking, but more importantly, what I, what I value about her is she's extremely well-informed and she is an amazing critic. And she never takes anything for granted and forces me to think out of the box. She's always problematizing things. I am. And that helps everyone think outside the box and explore not the tried and tested and true, but the what if, right? And in that sense, to me, has been a, lear a steep learning curve to just sit, sit down in Uruguay, across an ocean, reading an email from Silvana with her version of one part of the paper. I mean, saying, oh, do I have anything to say about this? I don't, what am I going to write about? But that was it, it was, it was just, just a pleasure. Same.